So today we're going to be looking at mesh core routing. I want to try and give you an understanding of how mesh core works. We call these the routing paths in mesh core, um, but effectively it's the way your packets will travel across the mesh. So if we look at the map behind, this is my real test environment here. We've got a bunch of users, some, some of my equipment and some of the other users have, have kind of jumped on board to test this. And so this total mesh kind of spans across about 10 kilometers, sort of 10 kilometers wide. Um, and you'll see here, we've got these little Wi-Fi icons um, and you know a big mast on the left-hand side. Of course, that's, that's my one there. Um, and then the others have kind of got like, um, you know, like these, these sort of Wi-Fi type icons. Those are basically repeaters. Um, and you'll see that there's also like kind of T-deck looking or PDA looking icons underneath some of these repeaters, which means the repeater and the T-deck or the, the client are in the same place effectively. So the way mesh call works is you would have like a repeater up in the air in your roof or on your roof, hopefully, um, or in your loft. And then you would have maybe like a T-deck client or, you know, eventually like an Android client that can actually connect via your repeater and hit the wider mesh. Because realistically, if you've got like a device like this, you're not going to be able to hit a repeater from inside your house. It's probably pretty unlikely. So that's the mesh. Let's give the um, all the guys some names. These are real names, so real mesh, real people out there. And um, this is this is kind of what it looks like. So, you know, at either end of this mesh at the moment, we've got myself. Um, so, you know, this station here, the Hartford Group. It's called Hartford Group because it's actually running like a, a, a room server as well as a repeater. So it does both. I'll come on to that later or maybe in another video. Um, and then right over the other far side, we've got the Don. And um, so, you know, this is the span of it. Now, interestingly enough, there is a massive great hill in the middle, and that is what this station here is actually trying to um, bridge. So Hartford Heath, where you see this, the, the, the repeat is called Heath, and this is a big, big old, well, Heath, like a big ridge, and it's very hard to get any signal past that. So this repeater is strategically placed so that it can kind of bridge, um, bridge over this gap. Now, you've also got this little cluster in the middle, of um, subnet and coal and also another repeater which is one of mine which is just in that area um, to hope hopefully try and boost things and uh, you know pick up the signal from Heath and relay it on. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get the T deck and we're going to basically just go in and, and just see if we can connect to any of these um, nodes. So first of all I'm going to try the Don. So let's go into the Don here and see I've exchanged a few messages with him before. So it's going to be no secret that we can actually make contact. So up on the right hand side, you'll see this number here. That's saying three hops. So effectively, that's my um, my path has, has taken three hops to reach to him. So anyway, let's clear this path. So we hit reset path and you see this goes to a question mark. That means there is no path now stored. The reason why this says 21,000 days up at the top here is because he hasn't got a GPS working or, or something's not right there. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to try and initiate a path. You don't need to type path test, but you can basically just type anything you want. Um, so we're going to hit path test and we're going to send that out. Now what that's going to do is that is going to try and look for a path. So you can see it's found a path that's three hops away. I mean, that's just so cool, isn't it? How it's worked out a route from A to B. So what did it do? I think it probably has gone this route. So I reckon we've gone Hartford to Heath. So that would be one hop from my repeater to Heath. And then I think it's done another one to the Don's repeater. And then the third one is actually uh, the one that goes to his actual T deck as well. So that would be your three. See, now we've got the path established, it should be pretty quick to actually send a message. So we can go, uh, you know, hi mate, and we send that out. And you see how, how fast that actually kind of went through because it knows the route. It hasn't got to do that kind of working out first. It just literally goes straight um, directly. Additionally, this means it's super efficient as well because this little cluster down here, although they might hear some of the packets, they're not going to repeat any traffic that wasn't intended for them. So the path is purely going to be Hartford, Heath and the Don. No other retransmissions or floods are going to happen that would potentially congest the mesh. 
Okay, so just as I was getting ready to film the next bit, um, PR popped up. So <laughs> this station over here, not very far away from me, um, but you can see here that it's, it's one, one hop. So I think he might be mobile, actually. Um, let's just see. Uh, I reckon he is, because it's, it's one hop. I've just cleared the path. I'm going to just see if I can get another path to him um, on that way, but not sure if that's going to go through now because I've cleared that path. There you go. It's gone through. It's found the path. So, so he mentioned he's got a repeater, look, hanging on the gutter on a bit of string. <laughs> um, yeah, so he's, he is mobile at the moment. So he's hitting me directly. He's hitting my repeater directly. Um, so let's just let's just tell him that you're hitting my repeater directly. And just fire that out. So he's, he's somewhere somewhere around Hartford somewhere. I'm, I'm guessing Benjo or the looks of things. Okay, nice little sidetrack. Anyway, looks like Cole right now is actually um, has found a path. So um, let's see if I can um, get a path back. See, right up here, I haven't got a path at the moment. It's got a question mark on it. Two hops away. So that's pretty good. He must have moved his antenna then or something like that. <laughs> this is a bit of a weird one, this, because two hops is not a lot. Um, I have seen this on Meshtastic before. Everyone's messaging now. Yeah, indeed. Where is WD7? We need to get him on Meshcore as well. Yeah, so uh, it is a strange one, this. I, I've seen this on Meshtastic before where I can hit Cole directly sometimes. So perhaps it's done that. That would be one hop from my repeater to his repeater and then two hops from his repeater to his T-Deck. That would potentially happen. I don't think there's any chance of anything ha hitting Cole's T-Deck directly inside the house, but... You never know. It's lower. It's pretty, pretty impressive sometimes. Anyway, so hopefully this gives you a better understanding of paths and how they kind of work on mesh core um, with a few nice little interruptions there from the crew on this mesh. <laughs> but um, yeah, the other thing I just want to touch on quickly is the, is the group feature, because obviously this we're talking about DMs here. We're not talking about like a broadcast or a public channel. If we use the mesh core room server, which is basically what this Hartford group is, then effectively what you're doing is you're sending a DM to the group. So you will always know that it's been received. So you can see here, Cole earlier at 2.17 uh, wrote antenna outside. And I put, I wrote working Cole. And the room server has responded with posted. So I've posted that on there. Now, if Cole didn't get that message at the time and he logged in a bit later, then he would actually receive that. Um, obviously, providing he's got good good connection to um, to the rest of the mesh. But this is a really low overhead system as well, which I'm gonna go into in a bit more detail um, later on. But it's excellent because it allows you to obviously have a group chat where you actually know things are getting delivered. And if you miss messages, then you'll, you'll receive them later potentially. So guys, hope you have enjoyed this one and it hasn't fried your brain even more. It is wild, this mesh stuff, like how how involved you can get into it. And it just, yeah, it, it continuously surprises me all this stuff um, mainly because you throw in rf and then anything can happen <laughs> anyway guys catch you next time